Hey everyone, it's Mallory here with cats.com where we're all about cats. And in this week's video, we're talking about tuxedo cats, going over interesting facts about tuxedos. So first off, what is a tuxedo cat? So a tuxedo cat is not a specific breed. It is a specific type of pattern. So it is this um, pattern of two coat colors and it kind of forms a tuxedo-like shape where they have this white patch on their chest. Maybe they have little uh, white gloves on their paws and they tend to have that uh, white chest piece kind of come up over their face. So it's kind of a masked pattern. Tuxedo is not a specific breed. Many different breeds of cat can be tuxedos, but most tuxedo cats are moggies, which refers to a type of cat that was not selectively bred. So it's not a combination of any two pure breeds. And it's not a purebred cat. Even though the classic image of, in our mind of a tuxedo cat is black and white, they don't have to be black and white at all. So the defining trait of a tuxedo cat is this piebalding effect, which involves white spotting across the body combined with a solid color. So these cats are bicolor cats. They have a combination of white and a solid color code, and it forms in this kind of tuxedo pattern. A tuxedo cat can technically be one of many different colors. However, I think a black and white tuxedo really remains the classic image of the tuxedo cat. And similarly, not all black and white cats are tuxedos. So black and white cats can come in a wide variety of different patterns, um, depending on where their black and white is distributed across the body and how. In most cases, a black and white cat who doesn't have that tuxedo pattern would just be considered a bicolor cat. And then you have other categorizations based on the percentage of white and where those swatches of black are distributed on the body. So for example, some cats are primarily white with a few black splotches, and these can be described as cow cats. In most registries, these cats can be described as high white or harlequin cats, which means that they are about 60 to 80% white with uh, some splotches of another color. And then the percentage of white can go even higher. So if a cat is over 80% white, and they just have splotches of that black color on their head and their tail, they can be considered a black van cat. My next fact is that a tuxedo cat does not have to have two tuxedo parents or even one tuxedo parent. So the black and white or uh, bicolor coloring comes from the piebalding gene. And piebalding comes from a white spotting allele, and the kitten only needs to inherit one of these white spotting alleles from one of their parents in order to end up being one of these white spotted or piebald cats. Now, the genes that determine how that piebalding occurs on the body and what type of pattern it develops into, whether it's going to become a tuxedo pattern is not really well understood, but we do know that the kitten does not need to have two or even one tuxedo cat parents. They just need to inherit one of those white spotting alleles and one of those black alleles, and then they will end up being uh, some form of black and white cat. And that brings me to my next fact, which is that we don't fully understand the genetic mechanisms that determine exactly which pattern a bicolor cat is going to have. In other words, whether or not that cat is going to be a tuxedo. So again, the bicolor cat is the result of a genetic mutation called piebalding, and this causes certain patches of the skin to lack melanocytes, which are uh, pigment cells. And so this causes the cat to have some white patches. But how do those white patches form across the body and why do they tend to form in certain patterns? And this isn't something that it seems we fully understand. So for a long time, it was thought that to simplify it significantly, these melanocytes would go across the embryo. So they were moving consistently over that embryo during its development. And so, you would end up with a white patch on the belly because there were no melanocytes there. They were too slow to get there. More recent research has shown that it seems like those melanocytes are popping up uh, more or less randomly, so they're not moving across the embryo, and that the issue is more to do with proliferation than speed. So they're moving just as quickly as other cells, but they're not dividing as quickly. So it seems there are a combination of factors at play, but we still don't fully understand. My next fact is that those white socks or gloves on the front paws 
Uh, tell a story of domestication. So tuxedo cats are among the cats most likely to have these types of gloves or socks, uh, white coloration on the paws. And this is something that we are almost always seeing in domesticated animals. So very rarely do we see any kind of wild cat ancestor with white socked paws. So we don't know exactly how this developed, but it's theorized that when cats started entering human settlements, for whatever reason, humans took better care of or prioritized uh, those kittens who were born with these white socks. And so it became increasingly common among domesticated cats. Um, you'll notice that these socks are seen on other domesticated animals. You'll see them on horses, on pigs, on cows, um, but seldom in their wild ancestors. So those white socks kind of tell a story of domestication. My next fact is that tuxedo cats seem to have slightly different outcomes when it comes to rescue and adoption. So you've probably heard that black cats are more likely to spend more time in a shelter and are less likely to be adopted compared to cats of other colors. And there does seem to be some solid evidence for this being true, though it varies from shelter to shelter. And we see kind of a similar pattern with tuxedo or black and white cats. So most of the studies that have been done haven't even accounted for tuxedo cats, but there was an interesting analysis done by Priceonomics uh, in 2015 looking at the outcomes of cats listed on PetFinder in June of that year. And they found that gray, blue, or silver cats were the most likely to be adopted with almost 80% of them being adopted during the time period. And uh, black and white or tuxedo cats were the least likely to be adopted at um, just over 69% of those cats being adopted during that time period. So it does seem like a pretty significant difference compared to their top ranked cats. But then again, the sample's not really representative of all cats and all shelters, and it's hard to say exactly what was happening there. Uh, they didn't control every single factor here. So it is interesting though to consider that there are some differences. My second to last fact is that tuxedo cats are equally likely to be male as they are to be female. So in contrast to orange cats, which are predominantly male or tortoiseshell or calico cats, which are almost always female, black and white cats or tuxedo cats are just as likely to be male as they are to be female. And my last fact is that there is a common belief that I've seen repeated in certain articles about tuxedo cats or black and white cats that they're more friendly or more intelligent and sometimes more loyal than cats of other colors, but I haven't really seen anything to back this up. And I also don't really even see this anecdotally among cat owners. It's more something that is mentioned in kind of lists of fun facts about tuxedo cats. Um, so let me know what you think. Have you noticed any personality differences between uh, your cats of various colors, including tuxedos? Is there any consistent thread you're noticing? And do you have any interesting stories about the tuxedo cats in your life? I'll be looking through the comments and looking forward to hearing your stories. That's about it for me. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.